Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Exotic Astrology. It's that time of <laughs> the year again when Mercury is about to go direct in a few days. But Saturn is going to change the sign finally. Saturn is going to enter Aquarius. Kumrashi. Finally. After a long time, right? So therefore, I made videos on this topic before also. I think I made two, three videos maybe or even four in the last one year on this topic. But as things are progressing ahead, I thought maybe many of you have requested me for an update video on this topic, right? Because the video which I made uh, for 12 Ascendants, that's like a uh, long time back. <laughs> So therefore, uh, here is my uh, humble updated uh, opinion on this, of course. And this is not just based on astrology, but it is also based on uh, how things are uh, gradually revealing itself, right? So for example, uh, you know what Aquarius is, right? Aquarius is the sign uh, which tells us about humanity. Aquarius is the sign which tells us about our belief systems but at a collective level not not individually individual beliefs are in the seventh sign from aquarius which is the sign of cancer no leo <laughs> so leo is the sign which shows what you believe in what is your thought process what is your ideology what do you believe is good bad right wrong whatever but <clears throat> What about the collective consciousness? That's what is Aquarius. So when we talk of Aquarius, we have to understand that Aquarius is the sign which shows um, things which the masses will be impacted with, right? But now it's very interesting. See, Aquarius is the masses and Leo is the sun, right? It's like the power and authority of the sun, all right? So therefore, one side we have the government and then on the other side we have um, the people, right? And therefore, now what's happening is Saturn is coming to its own sign. Yes, Aquarius and Capricorn are own signs. But within that, Aquarius is a special sign because Aquarius is the Mool Tricorn sign of Saturn, which is like... A better placement for Saturn, right? Now, some astrologers also uh, pursue this idea that Rahu also is the co-ruler of Aquarius, right? And of course, if you see from a Kalpurush Kundli, if you see Aquarius is sign number 11, which is actually, you know, very similar to the 11th house. <clears throat> and 11th house is the house of desire. Now, the 11th house and Aquarius, these are very contradictory energies. If you see um, the Kalpurush Kundli, who is the Karaka for the 11th house? Is it Rahu or Saturn? No, it's Jupiter actually, right? Jupiter is the Karaka uh, for the 11th house also. Jupiter has Karaka for so many houses, right? But uh, it's very weird that uh, they say Saturn is the ruler of the zodiac sign, right? So... Zodiac sign is lauded by different planets, but the Karaka is different, right? And on top of that, they say Aquarius is also co-ruled by Rahu. Oh my God, what's going on? Jupiter, Saturn, Rahu. Uh, very conflicting energies. There are a lot of similarities, but a lot of conflicts also. So if you take Jupiter and Saturn, uh, what do what are the similarities? Similarities are things which take long term. You know, it's like commitment, perseverance, and vision, and all these things are under Jupiter and Saturn. I mean, if you try to think of things which are common, right? Uh, but there are a lot of differences also. Like Jupiter is optimism, you know, Saturn is pessimism, right? Uh, that's how it is. <laughs> and similarly, if you take Jupiter and Rahu, both have similarities, like, you know, their expansion. But one is Sattvic, one, one is Tamasic, right? So there are differences. So among Saturn and Rahu, there are 
uh, similarities. What are the similarities? Uh, they both show suffering, right? But then there are a lot of differences. One shows suffering um, inherently, which is Saturn. And Rahu shows uh, suffering uh, or rather pleasure, right? I mean, at the end of the day, it's suffering, but it shows uh, pleasure-oriented suffering, right? <laughs> Saturn is pain-oriented suffering and Rahu is pleasure-oriented suffering. Saturn represents those things which you eventually uh, give up on, right? Or things which are discarded, people who are discarded sometimes. And Rahu represents those things which you might want to fulfill, uh, but uh, at the end of the day, either it's fulfilled or you're not, or not you're frustrated. That's what Rahu represents. So, Saturn, Rahu and Jupiter, imagine three planets are sitting together. What a conjunction that is. Wow. That can take you to the heaven or it's like a royal road to hell, right? So therefore, what we can expect. So now what's happening is, see, what's the difference between the Karaka and the Lordship of a planet? So, for example, um, the Karaka shows the ultimate vision of the house, right? So, the 11th house has Karaka as Jupiter, which means what is the ultimate vision for that house? It's the essence. The Karaka shows the essence, right? Now, what is it? What is the ultimate essence of fulfillment of desire? It's happiness, basically. In short, nothing more than that, right? But the problem uh, is, uh, if it is only materialistic, then uh, even if it is fulfilled, we, we still want something new, right? Or even if it is fulfilled, we are kind of frustrated, right? And what is the, uh, what, what is the uh, Lordship? So the Lordship is of Saturn, which means the Lordship shows the gross activities, which is, you know, like to fulfill desires, you have to do hard work, you have to be patient, tolerance, you know, all these things you require, right? You have to walk in the background, only then the results will come, right? So, therefore, it, it's very, very peculiar, right? So, just like 10th house, Surya is the Karak, right? Mercury is the Karak. Uh, but Lordship is still with Saturn, right? Which means still to gain intelligence and, you know, money and which is Mercury and name, fame, power position, which is Surya, the sun. You still got to work hard. There's no um, substitute, right? Smart work is good, but even then you got to work hard in a smart way, right? You can't replace hard work um, I mean, just by working smart. You know, you can't be lazy smart and you can't just say, oh, yeah, yeah I'm, 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 I just want it. You know, I'm not going to do much. I'm just smart. You know, I'll do something once, once in a while. Of course, smart work is very important, but you have to work your way through the ladders, right? Otherwise, that's of not much use. So, therefore, but at the end, is the goal just to keep working, work, 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 work? No, that's not the goal, right? The goal for the 10th house is money and power, which is Mercury and Sun. Similarly, for the 11th house, what is the goal at the end? It is... Happiness, fulfillment of desire, joy, pleasure, right? You know, sattvic pleasure, you feel happy and you feel content. Uh, you, you feel that, yes, um, I have made it in my life, right? That's what is Jupiter. So now imagine Jupiter, Saturn and Rahu, the energies have kind of, you know, uh, mixed. And why do I say Jupiter here? Not because he's the Karaka for the 11th house, but now if you see, Jupiter, before being in Pisces, he was also in the sign of Aquarius, right? Some time back. So, therefore, <coughs> this is the time. So, this current when Saturn, you know, goes to Aquarius, you will see there's a lot of awareness which will come out on hard work, you know, on, uh, and especially now you're seeing this, you know, big companies, they're doing all these layoffs, Right. Now, of course, I'm not doing post-mortem astrology here, which means, you know, oh, layoffs have happened. Now I'm trying to figure out why it is happening. No, I'm, I'm not doing that. What I'm trying to tell is that the masses will become aware of what actually matters in life. You know, what, what is actually important in life? Uh, is it, <clears throat> is it, 
is it just that you know you have to keep working work 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 is it just saturn or do you also want jupiter because what happens is when a planet comes to the own sign or multicorn sign then we become more aware of the things right so especially when saturn uh was in uh, like capricorn you know then uh, it came to aquarius in 2022 and then again it went uh, retrograde right and now uh, it's again in capricorn and in the next uh, i think 17th saturn is going to move into uh, aquarius again and then not come back to capricorn again you know after another 20 30 years so <clears throat> Therefore, you you might have seen, you know, in different workplaces, you know, there, there has been different talks on uh, you know, work-life balance, you know, like home office or whatever, you know, it's like hybrid office, right? Or should you go to your office or not, right? So these, these are discussions uh, which are very prominent workplace discussions, which we had in the last two, three years, right? Uh, keeping into consideration the fact also that there there was a big pandemic like COVID, of course, uh, which is still going on, unfortunately, in some parts of the world. But nonetheless, now, because Saturn has moved to a more, is going to move, uh, hopefully not yet, <laughs> into a more evolved sign like Aquarius. So you will see that more, many different organizations they will uh, they will rethink on their work policies you know they will rethink on uh, things like work life balance because now people will understand more that it's just not important to work and earn money it's important to have a good health it's important to do spiritual practices it's important to give time to your family it's important to give time to your children you know parents your friends and you know social um, social causes you know like it's important to do charity so all these things will actually play out you know? and therefore uh, it's a good time where uh, if 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 you are planning to you know do something new something constructive uh, in areas of you know work life balance or something like that it's a good time for you uh, if you're planning to start some business around it you know like many uh, softwares have come up in the last two three years you know for home office and all this right so that could be a very important area where you could focus on right or you can help people uh, understand the meaning of you know work and ethics and doing things uh, in a proper way it's not just that you do something just because you are you are expected to do something right like last year there was a lot of talk on all this you know moonlighting you know it's like moonlighting is basically if i am correct please correct me if i am wrong moonlighting is basically you know you have a job but uh, you are doing something on the side also it's like a side hustle you are doing okay uh, so that was not permitted by some companies right <clears throat> and then there was a lot of talk on uh, uh, what was that what was that i'm not able to recall there was one more thing where uh, companies had a lot of discussions okay what was that why am i not able to recall it's there in my lips but <laughs> uh, hopefully i remember it uh, during the course of the video so we, we have seen you know there's like a talk on moonlighting and and there was another thing yes i remember it's called as quite quitting right so it's something like you know where uh, employees are only doing that much which is expected out of them you know, for keeping their job and like maintaining a low profile like right? that's like quite quitting uh, please correct me if i'm wrong in both the two terminologies so we have seen the last two, three years, you know, like work has dominated the entire uh, the entire equation, you know, work-life balance. But now uh, we can see the fruits will come up, you know, like hybrid work culture and all this, which are already coming, but it will come up more actually, right? <clears throat> and people will understand the importance of holistic happiness, which is, you know, the 11th house, which is all-rounded development, all-rounded happiness, and we'll also do spiritual practices and big communities, big projects will come up where uh, people would like to do things together. That sense of community and building is going to be very important. Okay. 
so therefore uh, these are my uh, humble opinions about uh, the transit of saturn in aquarius and i hope uh, that we are able to feel more connected as a community and not just uh, feel that we are just all by ourselves all right so thank you very much for your patience if you want a consultation from me regarding this transit you can always go to my website you will find it down in the description section and yes if you are new to the channel then please subscribe to it down below and if you have not watched the 12 ascendants video uh, then maybe you can find it in my home page okay Thank you very much. God is there with you all the time, irrespective of where Saturn is placed in your birth chart or during transit. Thank you very much.